Seems you have become irritated and it's the reason you are calling me a liar many a times in this last letter of yours. I do not recall any instance when I spoke a lie to you. However to deny existence of God is one's lying to himself. I do not have a belief system. I am not required to believe anything. You do not have a belief system as far as articles of faiths for any religion is concerned. But what I am trying to convince you is that atheism is an ideology which starts with negation of God. And then it examines every evidence with the perspective that each and everything has, in some way, come into existence from simple things, and can be thus explained, there is no necessity of God. Atheists do not try to think of the possibility of existence of God. This is what I am calling as their one and only article of faith. To start with the assumption that God does not exist. Even for theoretical consideration they do not want to accept the possibility of existence of God. I also know that it evidently did happen due to many different cues and clues which I could share with you. Well. I have replied you back in every letter of mine that those were not any clues suggesting evolution to be true. You did not reply me that which one arise first? The living being, with well-formed structures which then created their code of life for replication, or the genetic code that gave rise to perfect life. Surely a cell cannot think of making itself up and then transmitting its characteristics to its descendants in the form of a code and RNA to get formed by itself, then replicate continuously, without getting destroyed, and then code for the cell membranes. Just because they are in us, do they need to understand what code is befitting to create a membrane which is selectively permeable? If that membrane was formed by chance, how will the RNA know how to transmit it to its progeny, how to localize it from destructive forces of nature? So, no you have not convinced me of evolution. I do not yet know how the first life forms arose, but I know that science is revealing more and more in that area. You are trying to sound truthful by saying that you do not know how life started to exist, but you are actually trying to convince that science has got all answers, and ultimately you will be able to explain it once science progresses. This is the same type of faith that Darwin had, when he said that more unearthing of fossils, will bring evidences in support of his theory but the evidences that came up were destructive to Darwin's theory. It showed that living things abruptly arose on Earth within a short era of time, the Cambrian explosion. Then what? The theory of punctuated equilibrium was proposed because even an impossible explanation is acceptable to many but not the creation. I also know that the various fables men hope to erect in the place of knowledge are not true. The global flood, the Tower of Babel, the creation myth, all of these are certain not to have happened, and each are supported solely by the least credible proponents possible using the most fallacious arguments imaginable, trying to squeeze their god in the dwindling gaps in our knowledge. It is not necessary for humans to know how they came into existence, rather it is more necessary to know why we exist. If we do not know that, we lose our life in vain doing that, which we are not supposed to do. It is the same thing like a student needs to know the course book thoroughly, he reads to pass exam and has no time to waste in reading on related things. Similarly, life is having a limited duration of span which differs for everyone but is of a maximum of 100 years for current individual. So if we do not know why we exist, we may waste our life in things which will not benefit our purpose of existence. We exist, and we know that we do exist. But why? You search for how, and keep considering one explanation after another, of how we might have come up without interference of an entity. Taking evidences after evidences as the final solution to the riddle, and hoping that this riddle will soon solve. But at the end, if existence of God is proven after 50 years, and you are already dead by that time, will you get an opportunity to rewind your life? I asked you about your problems with Islam and Quran, but you did not reply anything earlier. You are now quoting Bible. Muslims do not have any concept of Tower of Babel's global flood 60,000 years old earth etc etc. 
so do not mess Islam with Christianity. Muslims do believe in Jesus, peace be upon him as one of God's prophet but Quran corrects many misunderstandings of Christians about the concept of God. That's why sincere seekers of truth turn to Islam. I asked you earlier, what evidence you need befitting God's majesty? How about objectively verifiable evidence positively indicating such a thing, which does not also involve any confirmation bias, wherein I have to ignore everything else standing against that assumption? You have to think for yourself, what evidence will you accept and then pray to God to give you proof of his existence? God guides to himself those people who really want to accept truth. As for myself, I studied the Quran with an intention of accepting or rejecting faith but evolution kept on pricking my mind even after getting convinced with Quran. But when I restudied evolution, I understood that it is not a convincing scientific theory, but a propaganda to misguide people into atheism. Assuming that it is there does not make it real no matter how hard you believe it. We need to imagine certain things to get the good explanation of existent facts. Gravity is an imagination, but we need to keep it in scientific books, because it explains many observed phenomena correctly. Need I remind you that many of the world's leading evolutionary biologists have been Christians, and that many still are? Bible does not exist in its original language of revelation, so it may not be soul-satisfying for its followers who get deluded with wrong choice of its wording. Take for example the creation story from Genesis and compare it with the Quran. Quran does not describe the six days of creation as consisting of mornings and evenings, so one cannot call Quran unscientific. The same as the description of living things arising on earth in their sequence, Quran is silent on these aspects, so it cannot be dismissed of being unscientific. In science, many things may be possible and no possibility is ever dismissed until disproved. However we can only posit what is supported as compared to what is not supported, and your God is not supported. The science has shown that. There was a Big Bang which was well controlled to create the universe with galaxies and its stars. There was Cambrian explosion which caused abrupt emergence of living things on Earth in most complex ways. So science does give evidence in favor of theism. And how does it keep you stay an atheist? I do not know. So what I want to say is that you start with the assumption that God cannot have any role in creating you or this universe, and then keep collecting evidences in favor of your assumption, while others find themselves free, and do not want to consider anyone's right upon themselves. Another lie. Secular people are more tolerant and more sensitive to the rights of others than religious zealots ever are. History has shown that people who committed atrocities did not do it to please God. In fact it was their racism and supremacism which was asking them to behave that way. God does not instruct humans to do injustice to each other. And with God is the end result when we all will be raised up for judgment. He knows what lies in our hearts, so we cannot hide our intentions from Him. After all He created us, right? But all we have to do is to do our best in our efforts keeping ourselves reminded of existence of God and of hereafter when we will be facing him. Currently atheists are talking about rights of human being on each other and that is a good development among them but we must not forget that communism was also an ideology based on atheism, taking lives of millions of people, depriving them of their right to exist. So they search for the excuses to reject existence of God. Another lie. No one searches for excuses to reject the existence of God. That never happens. Nor should it, since there is no need to deny that which was never indicated in the first place, and therefore doesn't warrant serious consideration. Seems you have no knowledge about how Walcott unearthed the Cambrian explosion evidence at Burgas Shale in 1912, and kept them hidden without reporting as it was supposed to disprove Darwinism, something he did not want to happen. Piltdown man was created to support evolution of man. Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny was coined falsely to support evolution. Even the experiment on moths about industrial revolution of England was a fake. What does it prove? It says that there are humans who are actively efforting to prove evolution even if it be with lie. That's why I say that atheism is a faith one tries to stick to and not to change.
since you now realize that ribonucleotides will spontaneously assemble themselves under these specific conditions. Assembly of ribonucleotide does not create life, and so even if this experiment was correctly performed depicting natural condition it does not speak about emergence of cell, which needs plenty of reactions in different compartment to be performed at right place and in right proportion. But the experiment was in itself showing that the phosphates, the reactive compound were added last so that they should not finish themselves off by reacting earlier. However you also know that new chemicals can enter an existing mixture at any time depending on the conditions, and not every chemical will always be present at the onset. You know this, but are not honest enough to admit it. So you're smoke screening now. This experiment needed efforts to create nucleotide and after ribonucleotides are formed we need to get other components necessary for the formation of one cell. Craig Venter took so much of efforts to make a living cell replicate with another DNA so these processes cannot just happen to originate and continue perpetually. So even if a few molecules of RNA get formed from nucleotides there is a long journey of perpetual vigilance for the living cell to arise and then to continue existing without dying. Life cannot arise without God's directing it in a fully planned way.